Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Phoenix, Arizona, it's time for Phoenix Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. My name is Sean. I'm the founder of Vantage, and I have Mark, my buddy, my co-host, uh, joining us from, I believe, Flagstaff. Is that where you are now, Mark? That is where I am. Yes, greetings from Cooler Flagstaff. <laughs> awesome, awesome. If you can bring the mic a little closer, Mark, so we can hear nice and loud and clear, that would be yeah, fantastic. Let me grab, let me grab so, that while you're... That's all right, that's all right for right now. You can grab it later. So what's new, Mark? I'm up in Flagstaff, been uh, kind of a little bit more stationary after launching the van life a couple couple months ago. Okay. And now I'm working on building it out. And it's been taking a little bit longer than I expected. There's a lot more to it than I ever anticipated. Cool, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I, I had an opportunity to uh, speak at this event coming up mm-hmm. this weekend called Art- Artipreneurs. Mm-hmm. So it's for a bunch of creative artists. So I'm you know, had an opportunity. One of my clients said, man, I think you'd be a great speaker here. So I had an opportunity to uh, to record a video, share a little bit more of the strategies of organization for uh, creatives. And yeah, I'm really just, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really going through and this, this whole year has been a lot of exploration mm-hmm. for me. And so that was the theme for my year. And I'm definitely exploring a lot of different options. <laughs> awesome. How about yourself? What's going on over there? Everything going good. We uh we are on our episode number, I believe, six, to five or six here. We had uh, to get started today. We had a little bit of a technical difficulty, so we're uh, I'm gonna get us started since we have a live audience. I'm gonna jump right in, introduce our two guests. I'm excited about having Megan Coughlin here from Backward Marketing, and also Julie Zanders uh, from. Uh, we've known each other for I don't know. Year, a few years now yeah. from back in the day before we even get started. So we're excited to jump in, get to know them a little bit, get it, get to know the, uh, the I learn more about uh, marketing, social media marketing, influencer marketing, brand marketing. So it's all about local business and social media marketing today. So uh, Julie, why don't we start with you? Tell us about uh, yourself, tell the audience, introduce yourself and tell us what's new and exciting. All right. So my name is Julie Zander, and I am the creator of Lifestyle Jewels, which is fashion, fitness, wellness, and beauty. And as you can see, if you're watching live, I just came right from teaching class. So I teach fitness. I have my degree in exercise physiology, but I was also in fashion. I worked in beauty. I repped beauty lines. I was on QVC. I traveled all over the country educating on beauty brands. And I thought, you know what? I should take all of my experience and knowledge in all of these different avenues and, and teach people about it and show great product lines and great businesses and what's good out there and what's new in technology and, and staying young and youthful. And you know my hashtag is beauty from the inside out. So it's not good enough to just work on the outside. You also have to work on your insides, which is, of course, the exercising and eating well and all of that. So I showcase all of that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, you take a wholesome approach on everything. It's health, uh, beauty, fashion, uh, again, everything is is interconnected because the better you feel, the better you look, the better you you also the stronger mindset you have. One hundred percent, and and it might be one thing where you have beautiful clothes, but maybe you're heavy, maybe you're not eating well, so you don't feel well, you don't have good energy. It's like they really truly do go all together, if, and it's not enough to just have one aspect. You really need to combine all of them, and that's what I like to teach and show. Absolutely, and and with that, you've also taken the next step to take that that skill that telling the story to the local businesses and all the businesses that you actually use as a customer and help them with their branding give them audience you do a lot of influencer marketing you highlight the local businesses which is where we met and mm-hmm. i so appreciate what you do you know giving the opportunity for the small businesses to to you know put them in front of your audience i love more than anything the small businesses because talk about blood sweat tears and just passion and they they have so they put so much energy into what they do and there's so many businesses out here how do you find them and as a consumer mm-hmm. it, it can become very overwhelming as to where to go even if you wanted to do something where do you start how do you know you're getting a good deal how do you know you're getting somebody who's going to be competent and do a good job so if you are thinking about spending that money putting it in the right place is really important so. You know, your, your, your live Facebook uh, videos that you do or live uh, social media video, which we're on actually one right now. Hey, everybody, thanks for joining us. There are a combination of 
online reviews because you you give review about the business. Absolutely. It's it's a customer testimonial. So because you are literally their customer, and and it's a combination of it's a live marketing. So it's it's a really powerful way to to highlight businesses because you've used their services. There's a certain trust that your audience has because when you say they're good, that means people go yeah. And I've used a lot of the businesses that you highlight. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no. And also, I think it's great because just like this, we're able to, as Daryl said before we went on, we're just having a conversation and all of you get to be a fly on the wall. And it's the same thing when I go live on Facebook with a business, you all get to be a fly on the wall with ever, without ever stepping one foot in the door. Mm-hmm. You get to meet the people that are going to work on you. You get to see the atmosphere. You get to understand what the business is without feeling like they're jumping down your throat trying to sell you something. You didn't even have to walk in the door for that, right? So because right. a lot of times you just feel very uncomfortable when you walk in the door to a gym or to a hair salon or to a, a, an aesthetics place that they're going to sell you on something that you maybe didn't want to do. And this way you get all the information, you get to understand who the people are, what their philosophy is, what their goal is, and make those decisions, like I said before, ever even stepping in. So once you finally do step in, First of all, you feel like you know the person that's going to be working on you. Mm-hmm. And and second of all, you know what to expect. There's no, you know, off expectations. It's just, it's a completely different feeling. Absolutely. And it's uh, your your videos are famous here in Scottsdale and Phoenix <laughs> area. And a lot of people know you. And uh, so appreciate that. Megan, great to have you. And this is a nice uh, segue because you do social media management and marketing for a lot of the small local businesses and entrepreneurs. Tell us a little about how the, how is the, you know, COVID has affected that? How is the business and where are you finding things are going in the near future? Right. Yeah. Well, a little background too, you know, mm-hmm. I, I feel like we're a little bit more of the behind the scene, behind the scenes people working mm-hmm. on your you know, logistics on the social media side. And then you get someone like Lifestyle Jewels and your engagement just multiplies by thousands. Right. Um, So, you know, but yeah, we've, as far as COVID goes, just like a lot of marketing agencies experienced, there was that like week long, you know, it felt like hell where just everybody, everything was canceled. Everyone dropped like fries, Mm -hmm. like flies, not fries. (laughs) Um, You know, there was a day where, you know, I lost like 75% of my clientele. So that happened. But then, you know, a lot of them have come back and that's just a lot of businesses went through that with marketing in particular because they were in an area they didn't know what to do. And that was the reaction. We got to cut costs and do whatever we can. So now I'm in a good place. Business is actually doing really well and I'm very busy and that's a good thing. So I'm very blessed for that. But, you know, I think a lot of people too learned that when it comes to social media and digital marketing, those are the things you want to keep running, whether it's a slow season or not, you just keep it going all the time and always be working on that. Um, so that's that was a good lesson a lot of people learned. But yeah, a little background on us. You know, we just do the behind the scenes stuff. We'll take care of the content creation for businesses. And it really can apply to any kind of business or brand of any size. I've worked with anyone ranging from a boxing gym to an oncologist, for example. Mm-hmm. And it's just always a different strategy. It's always a different, you know, different platforms, different number of posts. And we help people put together those strategies and details because a lot of people, they come to us saying, I know I need to be on social media, but I don't want to do it. I don't know what to do. And I totally get that. If I could delete all my social media, that'd be great, but I can't do that. <laughs> As so a business, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> we take care of that for you. And and that's, that's what Backcore Marketing is all about. That's awesome. You know, I love, uh, tell me the story behind the name Backcore Marketing and how you know, the teamwork that, that that you realize at some point that doing it all by yourself is just not going to be scalable. It's not going to get you anywhere. And you in your own business expanded and built your own team and that you're also a team member to those small business owners and solo, uh, solopreneurs that you can help them become part of you, part of their team. To, so give me a little bit about on the on the name and how you came up with it and the story behind it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think anyone who has sat down and tried to do their own social media has learned how long it takes. Mm. And so that's kind of where we came in is, is we're the team that helps you do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, a lot of people, they go to hire a social media manager, they, they create a role for this, but they don't realize they're kind of expecting a unicorn of sorts because 
you need if you if you want like one full time social media or community manager or whatever, this is a person who can film, edit, engage, mm-hmm. who can write content, mm-hmm. who can also have customer service skills and all kinds of things. And so, you know, it's good to have a team behind you of brand advocates and where the name comes in also because I'm just a big basketball fan. Like, mm-hmm. go Suns, by the way. <laughs> oh, my God. Did they so, did they win last night? No, we did not so. win yeah, last night. We need a little bit of a stress. Yeah. We can't be that easy. Yeah. But, you know, like the backcourt on a basketball team, mm-hmm. our job is to defend your brand, mm-hmm. assist, and help you score. So that's where the name came in. I Cute. love it. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. So, yeah, and I, I love hearing that when, when you gave a little bit of a background on the legacy, that was that was just really cool to see how it all came about as well. And so, Jules, I, I have a question for you in terms of just the, you're this influencer and you have an opportunity to share so much and you were talking about the inside out. You know, I have a, I know that there's a whole new shift kind of on this authenticity side. So can you kind of speak to that as you're, as you're working on things on the inside? right? Or, or the outside. How does the authenticity, because there's vulnerable moments, there's transparent moments, there's those moments where you're like, oh my gosh, I have all these people watching me. How do I communicate this in a way that allows me to really share my authenticity and also share something that I might not want to share? So like, again, I think there's this whole idea of influencers. So I'd, I'd love to kind of get your take on, you know, one, how you became an influencer and then two, how you're dealing with the the authenticity piece of of those things that you might not want to say in front of hundreds of thousands of people. <laughs> right. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, because I was just going to say that. Audience, okay, yes. so Mark is on Zoom and you guys don't get to hear him, but basically he wants to know how I stay authentic uh, when I am promoting things, also how I got started. And uh, I'm glad that you asked that. That's actually a big question, but I am And my mom would tell you, I share too much. I am too authentic. I am too open with my life. But I have to say, I really, I really share everything. I truly do. And I don't promote anything I don't love. So that's one thing you can be sure of. And and I have had to come back and say, I don't ever bash a brand ever. But if somebody asks me, I'll just say, you know what? You know, it didn't work. One really great example is right before I went to teach one of my fitness classes, I had gotten an energy packet. And I'm like, okay, so I have this energy packet and I hadn't tried it yet. And I put it on my tongue and it tasted good. I was like, oh, really sweet, but it was fine. The entire class, I I thought I was going to have a heart attack. And I didn't mention it (laughs) during during the class. I didn't mention it. But the next day I said, by the way, you guys, you will not see me promoting it. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. And so, you know, we'll leave it at that. So I really do share everything as far as that goes. But there is my personal life and there's my business life. And I really try to keep, though I'm authentic with my personal life, I have shared, I've had really serious podcasts about what's happened in my life as a divorced woman and all of those things. Um, I do share, but I'm also very careful of what I say and, and, and I don't bash on anybody ever. And then as far as how did I get to here was, and this is sort of interesting, is that I was um, working for the national spokesperson for a body care line. And I also was put in charge of PR. And the PR firm said, this was about 10 years ago, we think you should do a video blog, pay for one. A million dollars, you can have um, Pamela Anderson. Or like, eh, can, can, we, can, we, can we drop down the, the money? Okay, so for $500,000, you can have Calista Flockhart. And we're like, okay, you keep going further down. So they're like, okay, for $10,000. We're like, okay, $10,000. We'll do $10,000, which is still Mm -hmm. so much money. So for $10,000, we get this little blogger and she creates her three-minute video on this skincare line. And I get the video. I have to approve it. And I'm thinking 10 grand. This is going to be an amazing video. And this little 19-year-old knocks out this little three-minute video that was horrible. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, why would I listen to, and you know, as a 40 something year old woman or, you know, almost, yeah, almost 40 year old woman, I'm like, why am I listening to a 19 year old telling me about how amazing her skin is and how, you know, wonderful this is. I'm like, you know what, have three kids, start aging, you know, get some wrinkles. And then you tell me like, why am I going to listen to you? And mm-hmm. it just didn't, to me, it wasn't, it wasn't authentic. It wasn't believable. And I'm like, and she made 10 grand and I was making $2,200 a month traveling around the country speaking with degree and all this knowledge. And I'm like, gosh, I could do this. This is silly. And I think I have a lot to share and I have a lot of education. I have a lot of background. And I thought, I, I'm going to share this. I could do this. 
And that's awesome. what you got, uh, got you started. Yeah. And that's awesome because you've done a lot of the collaborations with our members on Avantage. I am. I know you did. Your first one was with, uh, I know, with the Dr. Hessler, right? Yes, that Monty. Was, uh, Monty. I still love Monty too. Yeah, yeah. he's amazing. He's uh so he's probably busy with the Phoenix Suns right now. Too. Yeah, a great chiropractor yeah. here in yeah. Phoenix. I bet a lot of in, yeah. I've met a lot of great people through Avantage. Um, it's a great, and I, I don't know if we're going to talk about that, but a bartering system for businesses. So you're never shelling out your own money, and you're just trading with any, yeah, each you other's can, you businesses. Yeah, you plug a scene. You've you've done that. Yeah, that, like, of course. Quite a bit. <laughs> Thank so you. If you're a, if you're a business, you should be on Avantage because you can <laughs> trade your business for other businesses, and it it's not a, a back and forth trade. You can use the bartering money you get and put it into other things. It's a cool concept. Awesome, awesome. And you've you've uh, you've been amazing. So Megan, uh, Mark, did you have a question for Megan or? Uh... Yeah. So th thank you. And thank you, Jules. I uh, really appreciate gonna, that. You, we're going to repeat love... that for the audience uh, here. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Um, and so, yeah, for, for Megan, um, you know, in terms of the social media, you were saying, yeah, you'd love to just delete your own. And, and there's so much that goes into it. What are some of the main challenges that business owners that you're working with, what are they coming to you with? Have they started theirs? Are they thinking about starting it? Like what are some of the biggest problems that, that they face when they're coming to backcourt marketing? Yeah, so uh, Mark was asking, what are some of the biggest challenges that business owners are facing when they come to us for help? And a lot of times it's somebody, more often than not, it's somebody who is a business owner. They have their hands tied in a million different places and they know how long social media takes because they've tried it and they saw it doesn't work when they do it themselves. And then there's also people who are very committed to their social media and are very involved in the process. So we've worked with people who are very involved and want to see everything beforehand. And then we've also worked with people who are like, please, God, just take it away from me and do it. I don't care. <laughs> and both is great. You know, we can work either way. But, you know, a lot of a lot of their issues are just that they want to be consistent. And a lot of the time they're not able to be consistent just because of their schedule and so when we work with them, we make sure that their profiles are just always working. They're always doing something for them. And they're just always, um, you know, performing in a way that matters instead of just sitting stagnant for a week. And then one, one week you post seven times and then the next you go three months without posting. Because anytime you do that, your engagement actually slows down. And the way all these algorithms work now is they track that stuff and you know, Facebook won't share you to more people unless you're consistent and that kind of stuff. So it's important just to be consistent. And even if you like only have 15 minutes a week, like use that 15 minutes to go scroll through LinkedIn or, you know, do whatever it is for your business, but just be consistent about it. So great. Awesome. I, I have so much to add to this. Go ahead. <laughs> and I'm going to plug Megan because it's so true. And this is what I see is that my business is, you can't do everything. I've created a full-time job. And so is Megan on doing social media. That's our job. And all these business owners out there are trying to do their job and then do our job too. It's virtually impossible. And that's why it's, it's a necessity to do it. And I also wanted to say that it, it is so constant. It's six to eight touches before somebody even thinks about making a move. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that means, and that means if, so if Megan posts for you or if I post for you six to eight times, that doesn't mean that that person saw us six to eight times because we all know we're busy. We don't just stay glued to social media. Mm -hmm. So that means how many times would it take for the individual? If, if Megan or I went live for you or posted for you eight times, how many times would it take for one person to actually see that eight times? That's a lot. That is. And we also think, and what I get from people is, well, I already talked about that. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. We're going to talk about it again. And we're going to talk about it again. And we're going to talk about it again. So even though it seems like we're broken record players and we're saying the same thing over and over again, I say that we're like little subliminal messages and we're just pinging you. Ping, ping, ping. Just a little, like a little mm -hmm. fly, just kind of, you know picking at you. And every time you get that little ping, there's one touch, there's another touch. And then all of a sudden, pain point, financial, whatever it is, it hits you and you go, oh my gosh, I need that today. But if we don't keep coming back and hitting them over the head, it's not, it's never going to happen. That is so true. That's such a great point, uh, Julie, <clears throat> because marketing, a lot of people, especially people that are kind of a novice or they, they will have it, they want to do marketing. They think they're going to do marketing in one month and then the doors are going to be swinging where it's really, it's, it's that consistency and over long term and eventually, you know, uh, 
if you have a strategy at it, then then it starts paying off. That gradually. is the <laughs> hardest part of my job. And I don't know, if, Megan, if you'll agree to that, but you know, you hi- they hire you and one month later they go, well, you just, we just didn't really see anything. So we're going to yeah. go, <laughs> we're going to go a different direction. It's I'm happened. like, like, let me, let me just shake you. Mm-hmm. So, and, and the funny thing is I will even tell them, I'm like, do not hire me. Do not hire. Let me do you a favor. Do not hire me mm-hmm. unless you want to commit to a series, because I promise you, we're going to do this amazing video and they're all excited and we get offline and they're like, nobody called. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm, I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> that was one ping, one of eight pings that we need to do. And it, takes, it does. It takes a lot of time. It's so true. I mean, I'm at a point where I've, I'm thinking of just requiring three month contract. Yeah, because, you should. You know, if you go one month, it's just not enough time, especially the first month. Usually a lot of the time is spent for like setup and onboarding, okay, onboarding yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. So you really can't expect anything after, you know, essentially two weeks of a campaign running. But another thing to think about, too, is just the fact that any piece of content that you have, like any video or FAQs on your website, blog posts, all of those things can be turned into like seven social media posts each. And so take that info. And, you know, that's what we do is we develop that content. And that's why, like, you need, if you want your blog post to go out there, you don't want it to be read one time. You want to push to people, knock people over the head eight more times and share that information for it to really resonate. If people are scrolling through their feeds, they have information overload just being thrown at them. And you have to have that consistency. It's so true. I like to use this as an example. I um had a a vet and for my dogs. And this vet was just a vet. And I moved 30 minutes away from that vet. So it would seem pretty obvious that I would switch vets. And I moved to the place where literally in walking distance, there was a vet. I could put my dogs on a leash and walk to it. I drove by it every day. I walked by it every day. I was like, gosh, I got to change my vet. Mm -hmm. And and I even had referrals to go to this vet. It's a great vet. You should just definitely go there. You know how long it took me to change? I had no barriers in my way. I wanted to switch. Mm -hmm. It took me a year. And so that's what I say. So we may come on with a great product, with a great great new aesthetics place, a great new hairdresser, a great new um, doctor, a great new whatever it may be. And the intentions could be there and there could be no barrier to it, but we're so busy and we're, we're multitasking a million things a minute. And, and this took me a year and the pain point, it took, took pain point. My dog got sick. So who do you go to? You have to go to your doctor. Three dogs on my lap driving a half an hour to go to the vet. That was the pain point that finally made me call. And we never know when that pain point is. So financially, you know, whether it's, you know, a need, whether it's, we don't know whatever it is, but we we just have to keep hitting people over the head until finally they go top of mind. I know where to go. This is, this, this, I've seen this a million times and now I need it. So Amazing. I have a question just in, in, in <laughs> as the, this is popping up here because, you know, overall, I, I totally get the strategy. I totally get all of that. So from the standpoint of, yeah, it's going to take time for some, how do you know? Like, how do you know that it's working? How do you know that your strategy is working? How do you know? Because if it's the ping, and I, I totally agree, I love all of the things you're talking about. How do you know whether or not you need to start making adjustments to something too early, too soon, too late? Right. Like, how do you know? when to make that adjustment, if it takes, you know, in your case, I, and I love the example that you gave about the dog, right? I mean, it's like there were zero barriers and like nothing. So how do you, how do you make that change? How do you, how do you start to identify whether or not you do need to make some changes inside the strategy? That's a good question. I mean, I think... So could you repeat the question? Okay. So, so yeah. So uh, Mark wants to know, when do you know that you need to make a change in the strategy? Because it does take so much and time. And how do you know when it's working? Or and not, and right? how do you know when it's working? Well, what I try to do is, and that's where I think my series are really fun because every every time it's something a little bit different. We kind of go at it at a different angle. So if this angle didn't work, maybe this angle will. We always try to figure out what's going to be that thing that makes it click for somebody. You know, if it's at a, like a wellness center where it could be, you know, it could be weight loss, but it also could be hormone therapy for energy, or it could be, you know, trying to get more energy, or it could be, you know, where there's different things. So we try to talk about different things, like focus on different things each time, because you don't know what that one thing is where they go, yes, I need weight loss. No, I don't need energy. No, my hormones are fine. 
but gosh, I need somebody to help me with my weight loss. Gosh, I need somebody to be my personal trainer. We don't know what that is. So I always try to change it up a little bit Mm -hmm. as to what our, what our angle is when we go live. But I honestly think that if, if you have a good product, and, and, and remember, we have to think location too. And in some cases, people will go, you know what? Forget it. I don't care if I have to drive an hour to go see this person. This person sounds amazing. I need to see this person. But most of the time, you know, there is. There's location. There's need. There's financial. There's, you know, so there's all these things, things that have to line up to a perfect storm on that day when they're watching to catch them. That's why you need to, to consistently be out there. That's why and consistently. And that just goes back to... To Megan's whole thing too is that, right. you know, and that's what she offers. And and she's basically saying the same thing is that the content isn't going to be the same thing over and over exactly. But actually it could be, it could be the, the same podcast, but kind of pitched a little bit different eight times. Mm-hmm. That's true. We have actually a, a question from Annette from our audience on the Avantage audience. And this is probably uh, uh, for both of you, but may, I'd like for you to uh, start, uh, um, uh, uh, Megan. It says, please speak about identifying and marketing to your target audience when you have several services to offer. So it's kind of what you were talking about. You have multiple, your business, you have multiple offers, and then maybe your audience is slightly different. How do you kind of hone in and then talk, you know, target your audience? Right. You know, I like to say, you know, let's say you have three and then narrow it down on the on the one that performs best for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and a good way to do that, really, all social media platforms have free analytics. You can look at your insights for mm-hmm. free. And, you know, it helps to just look at, poke in there every now and then and see what works. And even without going into your analytics, you can see which posts, like, you know, which ones perform really well. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it can be frustrating because you could, you know, craft a really, really nice, value, valuable, information-packed Facebook post and 12 people see it. It happens all the time. And so, it's good to look at those insights and just see like, okay, which ones performed really well and capitalize on what's currently working. And that's how, you know, we're always adjusting strategies because we'll look back and be like, hey, this one, by the way, got like 100 likes because, you know, it had this person in it or something like that. And just use those strategies and keep keep pushing that forward. And that's that's a good way to kind of identify, you know, who do we want to focus on? And then also think about the platform, you know, which who are the type of people who use Instagram? Like, who are the type of people that are on Facebook? Are they the right demographic for what you're trying to do? And just think about those things. And that information is also in your insights too. You could see the demographic and you could learn like what time that they're on social media, what time they're sitting on their couch scrolling through their phones and Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, so that's, that's actually, as far as the platforms you're talking about, how do you choose? Because there's so many and new ones are popping up every day. You know, there's TikTok and Tic Tac and, you know, Clubhouse. <laughs> and there's so many. Is How do you know if you start really trying to focus on all of them, you're going to get, uh, you know, yeah. uh, go dizzy, right? So how do you know which one is the right one for you? And what's the what are your favorites? And what's a good number to have as far as multiple platforms? Yeah, I say I typically suggest pick one that's your favorite Mm -hmm. and then maybe two to supplement it, sometimes just one. So, you know, don't try to be on all of them. Don't be on TikTok if you don't have to be. And don't, you know, try to learn how to use Clubhouse if it's not right for you or if your target audience isn't on there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, people always ask for Twitter, for example, you know, it works well for some people. And then for others, I say, let's just scrap it. You know, you've tweeted 40 times this month and got one like, mm-hmm. and that happens a lot, but people are kind of scared. They're like, well, I thought I had to be on Twitter. No, you really don't. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't hurt you if you just deleted it all together. So, um, you know, that kind of stuff works, but I say, just pick one and put your strategy heavily towards that. And then the others act as a supplement most of the time. And just think about what opportunities each platform has and what who is your target audience. If you're B2B, they're on LinkedIn. <clears throat> if it's health and beauty and fitness, Instagram is great for that. So just think about who's using what platforms these days. I'll tell you what, though. I get a ton of business from LinkedIn. Yeah. A ton. And I think that's the one. It's starting to get more noticed. Mm-hmm. But I think for a long time, people really didn't uh, look at that at all. And I, if you're a business, I would be on there because so many people 
say, I'm done with social media like you. It's your business, so you have to be. But if you could not be, you wouldn't, but you would have a presence on LinkedIn. And so that's what I found is that business people, and even though, look, health, beauty, and wellness, business people need it, want it. They want to feel good. Everybody needs it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are a business person and your presence is only on LinkedIn, hello. That's... I a thousand percent agree with that. LinkedIn, you know, if anything, we've been focusing a lot on that lately, especially for B2B related clients, just because, you know, you could perform lead generation through there and you can do it in a way that isn't spammy or annoying. Like it's totally possible. And LinkedIn, you know, I've gotten business from LinkedIn and I've helped a lot of people get business from LinkedIn and it's reliably the best place to do that. So, and also, I mean, I say Instagram, you, if you have it set up with your business account with Facebook, everything you post on Instagram shares to Facebook. So, you know, you, you get a twofer, right? you know, Mm -hmm. so. And Twitter too, right? And Twitter too. Right. Yeah. So I just, you know, share I, more is more. You can't mess up with that. But going on then doing TikTok, I agree. Like, I I, I just can't. <laughs> it's, yeah, so it's I, I, l- let the new generation. Yeah, I just, I mean, I'm creative <laughs> to a, to a, to an extent. Not, but, I don't think it's quite there yet for businesses. Uh, obviously, it depends what kind of business. If you're in supplements or you're doing some other type of thing, maybe. But for the businesses, we're in entrepreneurs. I think TikTok is still has improved itself. Yeah, I, I just, right? yeah, I agree. Cool. I have a Go quick ahead. question. Go ahead, just Mark. Off topic here. It's, it's uh, popping up. And so I'm wondering what others would think about this too, in terms of what makes for good content. So Mark asks, uh, what makes for good content? It's a $64 million question. <laughs> I'll, I'll start with that. No, okay. no pressure. <laughs> well, I, I think I've, I mean, my whole thing on my content is I want to make it fun. Mm-hmm. and educational at the same time. So I want people to, what is Seinfeld? It's a show about freaking <laughs> nothing. Right, it's right. a show about nothing. And right, it had right. massive success, right? <laughs> so I kind of looked at it like, all right, I want to educate people, but nobody wants to be spoken to. Nobody wants to be talked at. Nobody wants to be lectured. We have busy days. Like if we're going to go and watch something, we, it, it should be light. It should be fun. It should be entertaining. How did Seinfeld do so well, right? So I, when I started, I was like, all right, people are, you know, bored scrolling through Facebook. What is going to get them to stop and look at my video? So goofy dancing, right? Mm-hmm. That And initially it was, what's up? The, if you go way back, I started with, what's up? Oh, you don't do that anymore? No, I haven't uh, done it in years. A, we just start yeah. off with the dancing. Oh, okay. Did, you, did we do what's no, up No, you today? didn't do the what's no, up, right? What's but I, I haven't done it in years. Up, yeah. But it was like, you know what? You know, look at me. Hello. While you're, you know, scrolling through Facebook board and you have this chick jumping out at you going, hello. <laughs> What's going to get somebody to stop? And and if it's just, you know, watching people awkwardly dancing behind me, um, you know, I know that I hear that all the time. It makes me laugh. You know, you get the really good dancers who are totally into it. You get the awkward dancers. You get the people that, that are pissed me. off that are standing forced. there. <laughs> forced. But that's what, that's what makes, that's what makes it fun and entertaining. And then within it, you know, I actually educate you. So even and on LinkedIn, I would get messages from guys going, I don't know how I'm watching you get your eyelash extensions put on, but for some reason, it doesn't matter what. These are business guys. They're like, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, whatever you're doing, whatever awkward, weird thing that I would never do, you're doing, I'm watching it. And that's and that's Seinfeld. Right. Whatever awkward, weird thing he was doing, we all sat there and watched what? it. Because You had it, me at Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> I it, love that show. So great. No, I, I love it. Thank you. Light and entertaining. And, and hey, maybe educate you all at the same time. Amazing. Amazing. And that's why you have the following that you do. Uh, it's that uh, being different and, and providing value when people do stuff. Megan, how about uh, you? What, what, what's a good content? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. And videos, number one, they just statistically perform better. They always get more engagement. Nobody wants that. to read. It's true. So, you know, keep things short and sweet. And I always just say provide value. Just keep providing value. I mean, it's a, it's a lesson in life, too. The more you do that, the more it comes around and, and treats you well. And, you know, my promise to people is the more value you provide on social media, people will catch on to it, give it time, and it'll it'll turn into positive results. So ping, ping, ping. Exactly. You know, like any anyone who owns a business or does anything for a living has some sort of expertise. And even if you know, like, slightly more than someone else about one topic, just share it. Like, that's value. 
you don't have to necessarily be an expert, a mm-hmm. doctor, anything on that. Like, just share your information, share what you know, because it'll help somebody out there. I like that. That's uh, that, that bite-sized value. Because I'm thinking of myself, you know, who do I follow on YouTube or on different channels? Is is the people that kind of, every time I get something, I go, oh, I just learned something or I, I get to use it. It's true. And it's that those little things. No, I love that. That's That's important to note. Awesome. Uh, this was a time flies. How much time do we have? Uh, we're good. Okay, cool. Any, any, uh, last thoughts or anything you want to share about anything exciting projects you're working on or before we tell people how they, they can find you? Well, I mean, it's so many exciting things every single day. You have your hands in so many different things though. You were doing also a, a kind of a uh, weren't you doing some sort of a dating club? group? Yeah, I have yeah. a dating group. I've got a fitness group. Fitness group, dating group. Oh, the dating group. Please, somebody <laughs> help me. I don't know. Somebody told me singles are single for a reason. So <laughs> I am starting to believe that. There's a thousand people in my dating group who say that they want to find the love of their life. Yet seven people show up for an event. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure that one out. But oh. They want their love of their life to show up in their doorstep. They do. Yes, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, it doesn't work that way. So I think that's the biggest hurdle with marketing is getting people to to show up. Take action, right? Take action. And and that's 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 the biggest thing. So you just keep hitting them over the head. But yeah, lots of things. My workout group, uh, which is so much fun, which is virtual. And who knew that virtual could be fun? And But so many people in my workout group have quit going to the gym because look, there's something to be said about rolling out of bed without brushing your hair, without cleaning your face, without Mm -hmm. even putting on workout clothes. You can do it in your pajamas, shoeless, and pressing play and doing it with me from the comfort of your own home. And in 45 minutes, you're done, start to finish versus brushing your hair, brushing your teeth, putting on a matching outfit, getting in the car, driving 10 minutes, getting out, talking to people, doing a workout, getting back in the car, driving back home. You know, you're talking about two hours versus, you know, roll out of bed, throw it on, go, done. And, and that's becoming the way for everything we do. There's a certain efficiency that we learn how to do <clears throat> more with less because yeah. of what happened last year. And business meetings are getting shorter. You're getting, you know, uh, instead of flying into a town and having a meeting, now you have the same meaningful connection. Zoom, yeah. Zoom it. Yeah. You, there's still certain uh, value in meeting people face to face. But uh, you can really pick and choose and be more more efficient about it. Where so, can we sign up for your Facebook? Yeah, that's what the, I was going to ask. Tell us about how where we can find you for your fitness. And also, if business owners wanted to reach out to you, where do they right. find you? Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Hold on to your horses. <laughs> yes. Facebook is Lifestyle Jewels. The workout group is on Facebook, but it's a group, Work Out Two Words. You're going to work out with me. <laughs> work Out With Lifestyle Jewels. That's the group. You get one week free. So click on it. And by the way, it's $5.99 a month oh or God, $60 crazy. for the whole year. Do you know what that works out to? It's $1.15 a week. Do you want to know? Dollar, what? Uh-huh. $1.15 that's, a week. That's basically nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> so what I tell people is it's not instead of, because everybody's like, ah, yeah, well, I, I went back to the gym. I'm like, this isn't instead. This isn't either or. This is a, why wouldn't you want this in addition to? So, mm-hmm. you know what? Three days a week, you go to the gym, but gosh, on Sunday morning, while your kids are just asleep, you roll out of bed and press play, or it was a really long day and you didn't get to get to, you didn't get to the gym, but you still want to get a workout in. You could press play at eight o'clock at night. I made it so inexpensive because I am passionate about fitness. I have my degree in exercise physiology. I was chubby growing up. All I want to do is help people feel good about themselves. I want people to realize that they can go at any level, at any pace. Nobody's watching them. So for people who feel out of shape or who are heavy or who are uh, have two left feet, it doesn't matter because nobody sees you. You do it at your own time and your own in your own space. Nobody you know knows what you're doing or how you're looking. And, and so I just wanted everybody who had an excuse to not go to the gym, your excuse no is over. More excuse, <laughs> no, no more excuse. excuse. So, and your classes are very high energy. Yes. Gets you going. Oh my gosh. And- so if you're an elite athlete, I'll kill you. <laughs> and if you're a beginner, you'll be fine. So it's for you'll everybody. Uh, so work out with Lifestyle Jewels for the dating group, Jewels Dating Group. It used to be called Lifestyle Jewels Dating Group. I did not know that lifestyle meant swinging. It's not a swinging group. <laughs> so okay. we just, we shortened it to Jules Dating Group. Okay. I didn't know. Did you know that? I didn't All know right. That. Well, you guys all, see, 
Education, right there. Education. <laughs> and uh, Instagram, Lifestyle Jewels. And you can reach me at lifestylejewels.com. Uh, or that's my my website or um, Julie at lifestylejewels.com. It's all just, you know, if you just Google Lifestyle Jewels, you'll find me. Yo, she's everywhere. And if businesses wanted them to, for you to to promote them, they can message you, DM you on any of the yeah, platforms. Yeah, you can message me on any of my platforms and you can also email it, ju- and, email me at Julie at Lifestyle Jewels. And also you have some marketing, some promotional packages on Avantage yes, platform yes, that yes. they can yeah. find. And awesome. Fantastic. How about uh, you, Megan? What's yeah. coming up? And give us how people can reach out to you. Um, nothing in particular coming up, but we always do 15-minute market, mini marketing audit sessions. So uh, we'll just take a look at your social media and give you some ideas for how to improve it. Um, no commitment or anything like that. That's always an option. Our Instagram is backcourt marketing, just one word. Uh, I think the same for the Facebook. That's the URL backcourtmarketing.com is the website. You could book your audit on there or there's also a link on Instagram to do that. Uh, my email is megan at backcourtmarketing.com. I think that's everything about me. I don't know. Awesome. F- favorite color is yellow. I don't uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> and you're also on, on the people can find yes, you. Yes, we're on, on Avonage. Uh, we do have a few offers up there. We have a LinkedIn specific one as well. There you go. With a little bit of lead generation thrown in there. So that, could be, that could be something to do, test out. Um, and then we also offer the the social media management, the full social media management. We could do it for Facebook and Instagram as well. So amazing! That's no, no tic tac. No, no tic tac. <laughs> no don't tic-tac. have a tic tac <laughs> offer. <laughs> that comes for free. Um, awesome. So, well, I want to take a moment and thank Lifestyle Jewels audience to hanging in there with us. Appreciate it, guys. And also thank our Zoom audience, our Avantees that uh, stuck it through with us. Thank you, guys, for. Uh, for uh, staying on with us. And uh, I know we had a little bit of a technical difficulty at the beginning, but I think it turned out to be a fun show. Uh, Mark, any last thoughts? Uh, and we're yeah, gonna I was to... going to say, if we only just had more fun guests, you know? <laughs> but, but no, you guys were, seriously, this was a blast. I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed uh, this. And thank you guys for the great information. Love that you guys had so much to, to offer here. And it's always a pleasure to be a part of this. And you know, I'm, again, I'm humbled and honored to be a part of this with you, Sean. I love what Avantage is doing for businesses and, and just what we can really to, do and create and share educational things like this um, for for our audience. And so that's... Uh, Absolutely. So that's and Mark yeah, is great, it's, by it's the pleasure. way. Everyone should work with Mark. Oh, thank Mark. you, Megan. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, Mark Mark is amazing. That's why well, he's my... Uh, my co-host here. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward. We're actually uh, Avantage as a community and as a platform. We're doing a bunch of new things. So be on the lookout. We are uh, looking to to uh, create a founding member board. We were part of our yeah. board uh, uh, in 2019. God, time flies. But we're trying to reinstitute that with a new format and get our users involved in, in our next iteration and next uh, things coming up. Anyways, uh, thanks everybody for joining us and don't forget to, you know, whatever they say, like, follow, <laughs> you know, all the goodies. Oh, like smash it. the like button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, guys. The like button. Button. <laughs> smash that like button. Right. <laughs> Wait, you know what? That's a really good point. Can I just say something really fast? Yes, yes. <laughs> you guys, if you see something that you like, like it. It's if free. You, if you have a comment, comment. It really matters to the businesses. So if you really like the business and you really do like what they're doing, it's so easy and we just forget. We just, we scroll through. And I even sometimes do it myself. But if you like somebody, if you support a business, like it and comment if you can every time. It doesn't take a lot. You don't have to say a lot, but it does make a difference. That is so true. It's true. Great And it costs nothing. Yep. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.